let me kind of uh, talk about some other things in history. In history, we have what's called also the Bible codes. I don't know if a lot of people heard of it. I'm sure if people have ever seen the Da Vinci Code, that was something interesting to watch, really. A lot of books they have out here have a lot of information. We live in what you call the information society. And in, in this information society, a lot of information is out there. My viewers, you need to check it out. It's out there. Reading is fundamental. You have to read in order to learn. But here's the question. The question is, is all the things that you've read, especially non-fiction books, are non-fiction books true? Well, if you kind of remembered not too long ago, they had a writer who wrote about his memoirs. He was on Oprah. And if you think about it, the memoirs were not true. So that's the question. Are all non-fiction books, are they true? Or is part of it true? And part of it a lie. But usually if you think about it logically. If something is half true. Half a lie. Then really it's all a lie. If you think about it. Logically. But I'm not going to make that decision to my viewers. It's for you to make that decision for yourself. So. As I started reading. These history books. I learned that not only. That hit not only the history of even my ancestors, but the history of mankind. I learned a lot of them. When the United States was starting, think about this also. Think about on the dollar bill, where you see the eagle with the 13 olive branches. Wouldn't it kind of give you an idea of the 13 colonies? Just a, just a thought. Only a thought. And with the unfinished pyramid and the all CNI, does that give you any ideas? Does it kind of hint on world domination? Just a hint, just kind of hinting around. My viewers, you are the ones to decide. And I kind of think that when they had the constitution, you, constitution, you know, we are the people. <laughs> And I think that when they wrote the Constitution at the time, they, I think their logic was meant for that time. And I'm kind of thinking, because the Constitution has been revised more than once. There's new laws, new rules. Even a lot of lawyers don't know all the laws. They write new books about new laws. A lot of people in the world don't know the new laws. A lot of people don't know what Congress, people in the Congress do. The House of Representatives and the Senators. What they do. What they vote on. Here's, here's an idea. Why can't the public, I mean everybody in the world, have a chance to vote for certain bills that get passed in Congress? Why does it have to be always the House of Representatives and the Senators? But whatever they vote for, that becomes that bill, unless the president vetoes it. So, I'm thinking, whatever these congressmen and women are voting on, we, I think, as the public, we should have a right to as well. Isn't that part of freedom of speech? I'm just hitting around, probably is not. I'm just kind of hitting around. 